All right, so you're not recording. All right, so the pen is not working. Okay, so I'll just find the place where this is supposed to go, but but I, I remember this. So um, so the, the, there's a formula for the sum of the first n positive integers, also a formula for the sum of the first, uh, for, for the squares of the first n positive integers. If those formulas are provided, you, you can prove that they are true via math induction. But, but in the first place, uh, how do we come up with those formulas? Now, there are many different ways, but uh, this is one of them. So I think the task here is I to find the formula, develop the formula for the sum of the first uh, n cubes. So that's uh, this, no? the sum of i cubed as i runs from one to n. So, uh, all right difference of these two consecutive fourth powers. Uh, yeah, all right. And so um, applying that formula successively n times with n replaced by one, two, three onwards all the way to n. So the equations with the brackets. So when you add the left-hand side, that's gonna be this n to the fourth. And then the right-hand side will be four times the sum of the cubes minus six times the sum of the squares plus four times the sum of the integers themselves minus one added to itself um, many, many times n times. Now, Joshua, um, mathematically, there is nothing wrong with what you've written down, but um, are, are you familiar with uh, Kanwara, your writing on a page and then you, you've run out of space? So for example, you want to write dog, so instead of writing D and then hyphen OG, it's better to just go on to the next line and write DOG for dog. In terms of readability, it's better if you're gonna use the hyphen according to the syllabication. So kunwari D tapos OG bitin e. So in Susarimbawa kung kunwari um, any animal, that's fine. All right, so you uh, truncate, you, you cut based on the syllables. Now for mathematical symbols, what's preferable is that if you have an operation, you put you, you move the operation symbol before. So that means moving that subtraction symbol there before six and this addition symbol here and the subtraction symbol there. That's for greater mathematical readability. All right. Sometimes pag nagbamadali kasi, it's so fundamentally more taxing to go to the previous line just to see ano ba dapat gawin? Is this supposed to be added or is this supposed to be subtracted? All right. But mathematically, this is not really a long expression, so I'm able to see. But these are, you know, some of the things you're not necessarily going to find in the book. All right. And to the fourth. So, uh I think you've got the basic idea. So n to the fourth minus, um, hold on, four i cubed. So n to the fourth. And then I think this should be plus. And then Yeah, I guess this is the bad no, This is supposed to be plus six sum of i squared and then minus four sum of the i's plus n. So I think this is supposed to be plus and this is supposed to be minus. But, but I, um, let's see what happened. And to the fourth. Then you've got two n cubed. Uh huh. Bakit po negative minus four? Ah, bakit po minus four summation of i? Saka plus six. All right. Because all right. 
this is what we are retaining. Everything else, move to the other side. Oh. Right? So, okay, no, minus six. Because uh, you, you are uh, going to put them beside the n to the fourth. And this is n to the fourth. So plus six, sum of squares, minus four, sum of i, and then plus n. And let's see what happened here. Uh -huh. So minus, oh, uh, this should be, uh, n, n plus one. So to n cubed. So that's correct. How about the, um, n squared? Three n squared minus two n squared plus n squared, all right, then constant. Well, all right, so th th this would not be correct. And so, yep, this is what you get. And that's what leads to this. Okay, check your uh, uh, algebra in, Adam, in this case, right, but, but that's the right idea. And the next would be, um, so this time, let's come up with a formula for the sum of the first uh, fourth and fourth powers. So let me move it uh, down here. And then when I move it to the right page later, I'll copy as well the annotations. All right, so uh, five. So I'm uh, alternating among signs, five and four minus 10 and Q plus 10 and squared minus five and plus one. Uh, same tactic, okay. Because um, you already showed it above. Plus 10 minus five plus N. All right, minus 10 and squared and plus K. Um, all right, okay, so, so it's the right idea. Minus, uh, n squared plus two n plus one, so n four plus two n squared plus n squared, uh, and then five, all right. Then 10 over six, that's gonna be uh, five thirds. So this is three is okay. And then five with two and two to 10 and cubed. Uh, three n squared times five, 15 n squared. And then n times five, five n, all right. That's five, uh, five n squared plus five n. All right, that's correct. And then I think algebra na lang naman to. So yeah, over six, six and five, and then three, minus 15, minus 13, minus 15, and then two, 20, and two, 30, and squared 10, and then three, that's what it seems, plus six and, all right, six and five, 15 and four, and then the n cubes minus 10 n cubed. And then ah, no squares left. 10 plus n. All right. Okay, I'm not going to check the factored form anymore. All right, I'll just point out in case I find the time to, just, uh, to do that. Okay, so uh, that's that. That was this is for the sum of the first n factorials. 
All right, yeah. It's gonna be. Yan ang kopo pag first and factors para na basa ko somewhere na mas mahirap. Yeah, uh, but but ito all right. Uh, it's uh, it's something you could write in terms of a telescoping series. So, ah uh, yeah, n plus one factorial minus one, and then ito. I think this is with the arithmetic series. Ah, does ito write? a formula for the sum of the, the squares of the first um, and odd positive integers. So right, right, right. Um, my concern though is when you factor something out, I think what she should be factoring out is four. Four times one squared plus two squared plus three squared plus that, that, that. Two squared po dapat yung yung po dapat. Sorry? Two squared po yung minutes. Up to? Up to squared. All right. So, so anyway. It, 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 I, I, I get this. So this is 2n, 2n plus 1, 4n plus 1 over 6. So that's where you got that. Then it is supposed to be minus 4. And then uh, n, n plus 1, 2n plus 1 over 6. Oh, all right. So that's where you got the 2 thirds. So this is correct. Well, what you just wrote here should have been four. All right. And then can I uh, take a, a common factor of uh, n definitely. And then uh, just check the... So the quadratic part is eight n squared minus four n squared. Yeah, so four n squared. Number four. Sorry, what's that? Number four, uh, I wasn't able to copy it. Was I able to copy it? Yeah, or because na babaka kasi I pasted it somewhere else. So here, how about the mga math induction? Ito, this is math induction. I'm not gonna move it to that other page. Although we also had math induction for January. Um, Joshua, next time when you write them, can could you write above the uh, above your solution the date of the page on which it was posted? All right. So about so like December twenty three or uh, January four. So that would make things easier. Um, hindi ko nahahanapin nung page where this comes from, but um, Joshua, because I am also going to be demanding out of you to write your solutions down carefully. Uh, we are transitioning from solve lang ng solve lang ng solve or compute lang ng compute ng compute because for uh, many situations, the computations actually um, straightforward. But, but um, presenting your argument is something that needs to be developed as well. So I see you're using math induction and, and there are two parts. Joshua, I would really like you to write down the base case, the verification that the claim is true when n is equal to one or when where, where n is equal to two. You, you might find it trivial, but see, that's the thing. If it's trivial, then there should be no problem writing it down. Okay, so do write it down. Okay. Parang ano po say po eh, parang it rings a bell. Baka siguro po nang sa programming. Ano ko po may sinasabi base case eh. Baka siguro po yung get recursiveness. You need to write down the base case so it will be able to generate a recursive pattern. Right, right. No, 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 no,
ko ng Fibonacci po sa ano eh. C++ plus plus na lagay niyo po yung una-una tapos sa next. So, ayun. So, please, I'd like you to uh, definitely next time, especially for the other exercises that I wrote, to write them down. Okay. Ito, um, yeah, this is a telescoping product. So, uh, yeah. So, I'll check this na lang, but it seems correct. So, I'm gonna not spend too much time pouring over the details because nothing jumps out naman na mali. So, ito din, I uh, believe, gumamit ng um, induction. So, please show the... Uh, Pero, parang hybrid. I don't know if I used induction po. I just, I, I assume... So, you, 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 you used induction. You, you know how you used induction? It's because you used this. You assumed this. So, actually, your, your claim is you don't know if uh, this is true. Get it all. When you're proving something, um, typically, conceptually, we do not write the very first line and use it and use this basis. That very same thing we're trying to prove. Because parang ito nung gusto mong prove and yet ito nung ginagamit mong uh, main tool to come up with your proof. So parang self-serving. Parang you are, you, you're using the, the thing you have to prove to prove that very same statement. So what we need to get used to with proving in mathematics is uh, isulat natin definitely ano nung mga things that we are assuming or at least that should be clear to us. And it should be clear to us as well what precisely are the things we are proving. So ito para sa akin, Dito sa solution na to, this is what you are assuming. And this is what needs to be proved. Otherwise, ang daling mawala eh. So, halimbawa, sabi mo, you're not sure if you used math induction here. All right? But I know you used math induction. If you are going to assume this and recognize that the first line is what precisely you need to be proving. All right. So I'd like you to uh, rewrite this, starting with the base case. All right. This is the basis. Okay. I, I would consider this the scratch work. Working backwards is a very useful tool, a useful technique in proving uh, statements in mathematics. Pero in much the same way that scratch work is important, but the scratch work should not be the argument itself. The scratch work is just the basis that we're going to rely on when we write down the organized argument. Ginagawa po kasi, kasi kung talaga hindi ko na po uma, hindi, hindi ko po kaya umabot sa second, gagalawin ko na rin po yung second type. Pero pag uh, official proof na, papalit na lang po. Yung dito. Yung, so, yung parang Sabihin naging... Sabihin left-hand uh, side or right-hand side para... Po, yung, uh, yung sa right-hand side, kasi it reached a certain uh, expression A. Mm. I will prove that the left-hand side can go backwards from A to yung right-hand mm. side. Actually, kunwari... Uh... I would, when proving a trigonometric identity, where, where you have the left-hand side and right-hand side, pwede mong gawin, uh, prove that the left-hand side equals something, equals something, equals smiley face. Tapos, nung, uh, nung right-hand side, or hold on, ang ideal situation is, starting with the left-hand side, you, you rewrite it, you express it until you end up with the right hand side. But in the man, you start with the right hand side, right hand side, rewrite it until you end up with eventually the left hand side. Or, but in the man, I think this is what you're describing left hand side equals uh, something, 
And then hindi mo mapalabas exactly ng right hand side. You are only able to come up with this expression. But what, what you can do afterwards is show that the right hand side is equal to certain expressions, which would in turn be equal to something. And then because the left hand side and the right hand side are equal to the same thing, therefore we can still conclude that the left hand side equals the right hand side. All right. So so, uh, but 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 still, what, what's clear is that um, when you write down this first part, and when you write down this second part, as you try to rewrite the left hand side and the right hand side, you are relying on other facts, other identities, other statements which are known, which have been proven to be true. You 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 are not assuming what it is precisely you're trying to prove. Because what you're trying to prove, that's a destination. Eh? And here is where you say that the destination has been reached. The left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. Okay. What a lot of people do, which I uh, find unsatisfactory, is gagawin ng iba. Left-hand side, equals right hand side and then conversion conversion convert the left hand side until you end up with something that's uh trivially true okay um i would say it depends on the person who's doing it if that person is uh cognizant of the fact that these statements are all equivalent and because seven is equal to seven, then yes, that is what's going to justify that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. My problem with a lot of students is that they do not see those nuances. So parang sa kanila, nangyayari lang mentally, that they're uh, starting with precisely what they have to prove, and then they try to end up with something that is inherently correct. Sometimes kasi nangyayari, the implications they use might only turn out to be one directional. As hindi pala uh, two directional. Okay. So, uh, sorry? square root one Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, mga square root. No, may mga, so sometimes you might end up in, uh, introducing an extraneous root. So, na ibig sabihin, you may have to handle the proof in a slightly different manner. Pero nangyayari kasi kung ganitong naive nung pag prove mo, hindi mo nakikita yun eh. So, that's why when you prove via math induction, I'd like to write it in the proper order. Okay? Okay, so anyway, there are still other statements and some which I added for the January section. So ito may mga dinagdago, uh, some sequences. So what do I intend to do for today? It's actually quite fortuitous that you mentioned trigonometry because I would like to talk about trigonometry today. But be before that, I'd also like to talk about so just some um, few other math induction problems. Mga math induction problems that I just like to share, uh, just to show you what other statements out there can be proved by math induction. Okay. All right. So today is June 10, a few more math induction problems. Okay. Example, show that any integer n greater than or equal to eight can be written as a sum 
of only threes and fives. May, um, may theorem. Ah, uh, the Goldberg's conjecture or something. Not Goldberg's conjecture. I forget the theorem. Um, let me. I, I I can't remember the theorem. Pepper even on Goldberg's conjecture. Uh, nung Goldberg's conjecture, I think, is between n and two n. There's always a prime number between them. Oh wait, wait. Uh, th this is uh, Goldback yata or Goldberg, but yeah, merong ano uh, theorem where um, parang ano after a, uh, so so given certain numbers, so not necessarily three and five kanwari, two and seven. It turns out that almost all integers can be written as a sum of two and seven, except a few numbers, except finitely many. So may may ganung theorem. I think that's what you're referring to. I cannot remember the name of that theorem. All integers can be mm -hmm. expressed as a as a sum of as a sum of only prime numbers or their inverses. All right, or if all of the integers greater than it can be explained as a sum of only threes and fives, you know. Kung in introduce na po yung two, does that mean po na, does that mean po all integers can be, you know, almost all integers except one can be written? As a sum of twos, threes, and fives? But well, actually, if you're going to introduce two into the fray with three and five, we might as well exclude five because say five is a sum of uh, no, five is a sum of two and three. All right. But actually, to all integers, because all events, all events, so can are ten can be written as a sum of twos. Tapos all odds, so. Tama, except one, except one. Okay, but but then uh, other uh, similar statements can be used when you're gonna use uh, other addends aside from threes and fives. All right. Um. So why n larger than or equal to eight? Because well, you could try to think about seven and how it's actually impossible to write seven using only threes and fives. But if you look at eight, well, it's easy to see how. Three plus five, nine is three plus three plus three. F uh, 10 is five plus five. 11 is, well, six plus five. So you have three plus three plus five. So seven is impossible, right? You're saying something? So, so seven is impossible. And it looks like uh, we're, we're going to be successful with 12, 13, 14, 15. But of course, just because a trend happens to be uh, apparent doesn't mean it's true for all positive integers n. So in, um, as we were talking about last time, something we have to be careful with. A trend is important. It's indicative of something, but a trend need not hold in general, so we're, because it claim. Sorry, what's that? Parang string po na conjecture po, de ba yung nalagay na parang string number of intersections. Bakit na po yung graph na parang halos linear po na mayal po ng x squared? Hindi po siya talagang x squared. Talagang you cannot trust yung mga trends all the time po. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I think like showed nga din na example last time. Eh. So anyway. Because if it is true, it stands to reason, or at least we'd hope, that there should be a way of proving it. So let, let me present a proof by math induction. So uh, step one, let's verify this for when uh, n is equal to 8. So actually when n is equal to 8, 
we see that, um, well, eight is equal to three plus five. Let's pull up the natin. Okay. Now, um, the, the, the second part would be uh, where we are going to have to be more careful. So, kunwari, let's say, n can be written as a sum of threes and fives. How can we show that n plus one can also be written as a sum of threes and fives using what we have uh, using this assumption, this statement that we are going to assume also makes you wonder, uh, back at, what, what's the thing with eight? So back at eight. All right, I'm trying to remember how this goes. Okay, number uh, part two. Suppose uh, that n greater than or equal to eight is an integer such that all integers from eight to n can be written as a sum of threes and fives. Right. And then let's write down carefully what it is that we want to show. We want to show that n plus one can be written as a sum of threes and fives. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, got it, got it. Get it off. All right. And plus one, of course it's equal to n plus one, all right? I, I mean, it's trivial, all right? But, but I, I pointed this out because this n can be written as a sum of threes and fives. And furthermore, n is greater than or equal to eight. So that means n plus one is greater than or equal to nine. Okay. So what I'd like to point out is the following. We can write down n plus one. The idea is that uh, no n. Ito, let, let, let me point out to you the idea. n can be written as a sum of threes and fives. So gagawin natin from n. Okay. So threes and fives. What we're going to do is subtract nine plus 10. And how exactly are we gonna do that? New three, tatanggalin natin ng three of those, and then new 10, papalitan natin ng uh, two of those fives. Hello? <laughs> so there, I, 
may medyo I confused myself a little bit. Nung, nung idea is, kunwari ganito, let me illustrate it. Okay. So, nung 11, so the idea is, uh, nung 11, alam natin, you could rewrite this as a sum of threes and fives. So, in fact, we already had three plus, so let, let, let me uh, do it for, let me illustrate it for 14. 14 muna. 14. 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 5. All right. Gagawin natin itong tatlong 3s tatanggalin natin. Tapos papalitan natin nang uh, five plus five. So and ito parin ng plus five. So what's the effect when we remove uh, the triple threes? We subtracted nine. When we replace them by two fives, we added ten. So what we put as replacement is one more than what we removed. So of course, the value isn't going to be the same 14 anymore. The value is going to be one more. And so that would be our representation for 15. So what, what this tells us is a way of writing down 15 as a sum of threes and fives. All right, so ganun nung in induction niya. Are you still okay there? Medyo abstract na to? Or is this something you've seen before? Or how are you? Hindi po siya, ano eh. Medyo hindi na po siya in the realm of pop. May tawag po doon. Sino po yun? Si... Yung gumawa po original management problem. Si German po. Mas, yung sa kanya po, yung idea niya po of math is that oh, you can always write it down. Anything, anything at all. Gumawa lang po sila. Isang buong volume po. Box guru, ganun po po. Sa pag-hip. It just improving one plus one. If you thought you can always prove na uh, it's just improving one plus one equals three po. If you took that much time. Pero may mga ibang things po mas um, ano mas uh you cannot write everything down. Mm -hmm. uh, All right. So so, so ito, I'm just presenting the idea. I'm just presenting the idea first. So uh before time mag attempt na isugot siya isa pa isa pa um kamare. Uh, 22. Here's one way. 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 tapos plus 5 plus 5. I'm not saying this is the only way to write 22 down as a sum of 3s and 5s. Maybe this is the only way, but this is definitely one way. So as I illustrated, uh, if we find triple 3s, we're going to remove them and we're going to write in their place 5 plus 5. Five plus five, and then the others from the representation of twenty-two, we're gonna retain them. Yeah. And so what this would now provide us with is a way of representing the next integer twenty-three as a sum of threes and fives. So let, let's uh, pause for a bit and show how we are using induction here. So the claim is that because 22 can be written as a sum of threes and fives, we could use that to show how 23 can be written as a sum of threes and fives. All right? So I you can say it's greater than 9. It's a bit, you can always, you can always use 9 to 10. So it happens now, 10 is one more than 2. Although I just realized that my solution has a flaw. Meron siyang butas. Kita mo ka ano nung uh, butas dito sa... Well, or rather the solution is incomplete. What have I been removing? 
triple threes. 14 happens to have at least a triple of threes. 22 has four of them. So definitely there are a triple of threes that I can remove. Paano naman pag 11? Okay, 11 po, dalawang threes na lang po. So, oh. Uh, or paano naman nung iba where you only have, kanwari, 28? Three. Ano po, ano po eh. But ko po, la, in all of the examples po, there's more than three threes that you can replace with five five. With, with, with two fives? Apo, with two fives. So, all right. Okay. So ganito, instead of writing down the solution, I I'm doing the scratch work muna. So the real realization that ano nung ginawa natin, uh, we took out triple threes that would need for there to be at least three of those threes. But then we have to consider the situation. What if there are only two threes? Or what if there is only a single three? Or what if there's no three at all? Let's say you have 15, which is five plus five plus five. Oh, so ganito, um, using these, ano kaya nung pwede natin gawin? So see what I'm doing here is ayokong ibigay lang. Let's try to figure out uh, ano nung solution. Halimbawa, 11, which is 3 plus 3 plus 5, uh, how can you use that? to come up with a representation for 12 instead of threes and fives. Three plus five is eight, and then three plus three plus three is nine. So you can replace the three plus five with three plus three plus three, and then you get the next number. Ah. Kung ano naman po, let's say po, five plus five, which is 10. You can, of course, replace that naman po with 3 plus 3 plus 5, which is 11. So it's sort of uh, building up on itself. How do I say this point? Parang, well, if 3, kasi if 3 plus 5 plus is, uh, can be replaced with 3 plus 3 plus 3, then... Oh, oh. Ulit, pa, paano ulit yun? Can, can, can you say that again? Sa, so I can replace 3 plus 5, which is 8, by 3 plus 3 plus 3, which is 9. So, kung ito naman po yun, 9, 3 plus 3 plus 3. Pero kasi, um, equivalently, equivalently uh, can't we just do the following? Replace 5 by 3 plus 3. So, if you replace 5 by 3 plus 3, parang ano po siya, parang siya medyo recursive. Uh, because 5 can be replaced by 6. You can replace six but wait, is there seven? There's no seven pala. Uh if by six. It can if it can be replaced by nine. The same five parang wala na pong six can be replaced by seven. So yung uh eight can be replaced by nine. Nine can be replaced by ten. Tapos yung ten can be replaced by eleven. Uh it's sort of going in on itself eh. Na it means Five, 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 six, skip, eight, nine, ten. It, it also relies on the fact that eight, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and so forth are just sums of fives and threes. It just goes backwards. I'm not sure I was able to follow the the the, the thought process you 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 were doing. Pero ganito, ang gusto natin, uh, Joshua. Let's say n can be written as, ano, meron lang siya dalawang three. Tapos, nung iba, five na lahat. Can you describe to me how can you come up with a representation for n plus one? So let's not get too hung up with the specific value 11 or 12 or eight or nine, because we want to find a way of doing this in general. So ito sulat natin n equal to the sum of two threes and the rest will be fives. So this way, no n, you won't be able to think of it specifically as 11 or 12 or eight or nine, just some number n, which can be written as the sum of only two threes 
and the others are fives. Plus three. So I know. Plus three, plus three, then plus five, 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 five. Ano ulit yun? Ano gagawin? To replace one of the fives po by three plus three. That's it. All right. So so that's the way of generalizing it. Itong five, it replaced by three plus three. And then copy the rest. Kahit nga pong isa lang po na three, eh, basta may five, it can be replaced by three plus three. Ka ano yun? Kahit? Kahit na po single three lang po eh. eh basta may five, it can always be replaced by three plus three. So actually, it doesn't matter how many fives there are, as long as merong isang five. It is. It is. Right? The, it is. The, the was necessary no point. There's one five. Kung ano which means at. Abo. Kung wala naman. Which means po, ito. Kung wala naman pong five, kasi lahat po three plus three plus three. Nakasulat po ah. Uh, N plus 1 is greater than or equal to 8. So, if sabihin hindi po pwede, ay, N, N is greater than or equal to 8. That means na hindi siya po pwedeng 3 plus 3. It must have at least 3. 3 is in it. And yes. therefore, that's it. It's by 5 and 5. Plus 5 is 5. All right. Okay. So, I think we now have our strategy. So, ang magiging consideration natin, meron bang 5 or walang 5? So that means we don't have to think of 15 where there's no 3 and 28 where there's only a single 3 and 11 where there are two 3s. We don't have to consider them as separate cases because earlier we were thinking of how many 3s there are. It turns out it may be easier to think of how many 5s there are. So now our cases would be meron bang 5 or walang 5 because if there is a 5, we're going to replace it by 3 plus 3. So that will increase the value of n onwards to n plus 1. So the only other case will be what if there are no 5s, meaning all are 3s. But the thing is, um, n, uh, all right, so, so we can assume n is greater than or equal to nine. And if all are threes, there are no fives, then that means n has three plus three plus three plus other threes. So we're going to triple threes, which can be replaced by five plus five. Ah. All right. OK, na? Oh, na, na fix na po yung butas. Wala na po. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted us to go through that. Hindi nung basta isusulat na lang. It's to show that there is a process. Titignan natin ano nung mga flaw, ano nung mga kulang doon sa solution. Okay. And sometimes kasi when you read the book, biglang tutuloy na siya case one and case number two. But what sometimes a reference is unable to show is how did we arrive at those cases? Case A. Uh, suppose the representation of N has at least one five. Okay. So, pwede natin isulat schematically as follows. N is equal to 5 plus sum of 3s and 5s. Okay, so what we're going to do is, okay, uh, replace five by three plus three, and that would then give us the following, n plus one equals three plus three plus the sum above of threes and fives. So it's clear is that, hey, we are able to use 
to write n plus one as a sum of threes and fives using the representation of n above as a sum of threes and fives. But under case A, where we are assuming n has at least one five. Okay, case B. has no five and involves only threes. Okay, this means uh, N is divisible by three. And since N is at least uh, eight, then N is at least nine and there are three of the threes. So n is equal to three plus three plus three plus sum of other threes. So what we're gonna do is replace three plus three plus three by five plus five, giving us the following representation for n plus one, five plus five, plus the sum above of threes. All right, so what we have shown is that because of uh, whatever case we are, the fact that n can be written as a sum of threes and fives means that yes, indeed, n plus one can be written as a sum of threes and fives. And that's it. Therefore, any integer n can be written as a sum of threes and fives. There is only one other thing that I am going to change in the proof because it turns out that our proof doesn't even need strong induction. To be able to come up with the representation of n plus one, we only used, we only relied on the representation of n. We only step one step backwards. So let me uh, uh, change step to suppose that n is an integer which can be written as a sum of threes and fives. All right. Is One other uh, show that any integer n greater than or equal to two can be written as a product of prime numbers. All right. Um, of, of course, if you look at it, it's rather obvious, naturally, Niba. Right? Of course. If, if everything is uh, everything to the every, every number is the ideal number. Right? Mm. 
Okay. So every integer greater than greater than or equal to two is either a prime or a composite number. Okay. Pero when uh, people were starting out laying down the foundations of number theory, they wanted to be sure, mathematicians wanted to be absolutely sure that everything that they are using as statements are actually true. Because the, the higher you go, what might seem intuitive might actually be false in some cases. So, so they were thinking, okay, we, we are convinced about the validity of, of this statement, but the way I'm convinced is intuitive and conceptually, is there a way of justifying this seemingly obvious statement in a rigorous manner. So in a point of view. So people try to prove this, not to be convinced because they're already convinced. They just wanted to prove this, para segurado, all right? So math induction can also be used in a situation like this. All right. So uh, first one, n equal to two as a prime number satisfies the claim. All right, so the claim is satisfied. So of course, if something is a prime number, you could think of it as a product of itself consisting of only a single factor, that very same number. Okay, now this time around, we're gonna be using strong induction. Suppose n greater than or equal to two, is an integer such that all integers two, three, onwards to n can be written as a product of primes. And what it is that we have to show, we have to show that n plus one can also be written as a product of primes. How are you, Joshua? Are you okay or are you feeling a bit sleepy? It's okay if you're feeling a bit sleepy. How are you? Sorry, I, I can't hear you. Okay, Karan. If you need a break, uh, jumps, uh, do jumping jacks or drink water, it's perfectly fine, okay? Okay, so how does it follow that n plus one can also be written as a product of primes? So two cases. Suppose n plus one, if n plus one is already prime, edi wala na problema. Okay. Pero how do if, you know if, uh, if, if n may naka, I run into a philosophical question for it? Kung n is, okay. a, n is a prime itself, how can it be a product of primes? All right. So I guess what we would have to do is um, clarify what we mean here by writing it as a product of uh, prime numbers. So clarification, if n is prime, we consider uh, n as a single factor making up this product. All right, the, the, all right. So, para lang mapaiksi nung ano, para lang mapaiksi uh, nung uh, terminology. I think it's just better to clarify what we mean by writing it as a product of prime numbers because clearly a prime number like three you cannot break it down further into prime number one multiplied by prime number two because it violates its very nature as a prime number. 
All right, so therefore we must agree that if n is prime, the product representation we're looking at is the single factor n itself, okay? So does that handle the philosophical dilemma? All right. So I'm gonna show that our very first case A uh, would be handled directly by that. If n plus one is a prime, then we're done. All right, because if n plus one is prime, then we don't have to rely on the representation of two, three, four, until n. Because if n plus one is prime, then we're done. So the, the other case would be if n plus one is composite. But the very definition of a composite number means that we can rewrite this Then we can write n plus one as a times b, where a and b, they are both larger than two and less than or equal to n. So let me clarify did this particular way of writing down uh, these two statements. So what I mean here is that two is less than or equal to a, less than or equal to n, and also b is greater than or equal to two and less than or equal to n. So it's both a and b, which are between two and n. So Konare, if you look at 10, well, of course we can write down 10 as one times 10, but the fact that it's composite means that we can rewrite it as two times five, where both factors are strictly larger than one and strictly smaller than 10, the original number. It's only with prime numbers where we don't have a choice. If you have seven, we got no choice. One times seven lang yan. But with 10, you have this choice, two times five. And it's that particular choice that we are using here for a, b. And here's how we can now use the assumption because a, is within that range. B is also within that range. Is A N minus one? Is A N? Is A N minus four? We don't know. But fortunately, we have strong induction because it doesn't matter whether A is two, three, four, or specifically N minus one or N, so long as n is within that range of integers from two, three onwards to n. Because here in step two, we are able to therefore conclude or assume that a and b can be written as a product of primes. All right, therefore, n plus one, because it is a times b, can be written as a product of primes from the factorizations of a and b. All right. Okay. Uh, how do you feel about these statements? Medyo abstract na ba sila or are you still okay? Oh, mas maraming words, mas maraming words. And eventually, you'll you get to that point na kasi nung computation, pag-solve ng quadratic equation, 
ano na lang siya eh, magiging consider na lang eventually as a lower level skill. Pag-solve ng quadratic equation, pag-solve ng radical inequality, medyo magiging ano na lang sila eh, parang you're just following a a cookbook recipe. So, so naman, step one, step two, step three, but it's things like these. Papunta tayo sa ano, higher level. You're right. There are more words. And it takes some getting used to writing them down. Okay. Uh, isang math induction illustration na lang. Po eh, sir. Yes, ano po yan? Ang ganda po. <laughs> ah, kakaiba. Kakaiba po eh. Hindi okay. po siyang usual sa school po eh. No? Ah, definitely. All right. Kasi kung magsasolve lang kami ni Joshua ng quadratic equations, alam na niya yun eh. Right? Okay. The plane is divided into regions by lines. Uh, I'll try to look for examples similar to these where you could also try to practice during the off times when we're not meeting. But also trying to remind you, meron pa tayo ng ibang, ano, ha, ibang mga problems. But anyway, Joshua, after itong math induction, I'm not going to proceed to a math proving technique yet. Balik tayo to something perhaps more familiar, trigonometry. Okay, kasi trigonometry, mamalaking subject area yan eh. All right. So the plane is divided into regions by lines. Show that it is always possible to color the regions with two colors. For, uh, uh, what? No, the, the colors can the colors are not the same. Uh, on the other side of the line, parang alternating. Mm -hmm. sort of yeah, alternating. So, kung adjacent regions are gonna have different colors. Yeah, we mentioned in explain sa akin that one of the past days po na ganyan yata. Parang exactly po. Yung yung color orange, po siya. Ko color na po, tapos on, uh, the color na po, tapos on, uh, yung adjacent regions po are never the same color na po. You can prove from that kasi po na any region na part lang po nun can always be, you know, can always be, kumaga nga par partial sort of recursive. Eh. If I can do this and I can do the next one, then I, of course I can do the next, next, next. And because you're doing it recursively, then your argument is by induction. Enough. Okay. So can, can you uh, recall what's the argument? And then let's uh, and then I'll write it down uh, in the framework of math induction. Did you remember? Or anyway, I I'll proceed. Okay. You can add a second and you can add a third color. But you can add a line. So your next line, your bar n plus one is adding another line. Mm -hmm. So by adding another line, so even though the problem itself does not mention an integer, if we're going to put this in the framework of induction, we're going to have to be the ones to come up with what n should be. So that's what I'm writing down here. We will prove this inductively on n, the number of lines used. Okay, well, if there's already a an color and then you add the line, Mm -hmm. you will invert, invert the colors by that line. Yeah, we invert the colors on one side okay. with the addition of a line. But that is assuming meron tayong acceptable coloration with the previously existing lines. So kumbaga, the, the mechanism here is for a certain number of lines, okay na tayo. How can we show the claim if we add one more line? So nandun ng induction kasi may assumption ka of an acceptable configuration, and then you're going to add one more line. So from n going to n plus 1. So if n is equal to 1, okay, the claim is 
uh, tr trivial. All right, uh, color one, color the half planes. Wait, uh, the, the number of lines you stop us, assume the colors are black and white, or if you want orange and red, it's up to you. I just want to introduce a particular color scheme in case I need to use those colors. Sometimes it would make the wording much easier. Kasi minsan, dun sa proof, baka, ba, baka mag-struggle ka with uh, invert where you have to use the opposite color. Tapos, what, what do you mean by opposite? So, uh, I don't know. I don't know. anyway, opposite is clear. But anyway, color the half planes. Uh, wait. Maybe I, I don't need to assume the colors. I'll just write it when I'm sure it's needed. Color the half planes uh, with... Two different colors. So, so actually, the, the color itself is just a way of categorizing. So, all right. Suppose n greater than or equal to one is an integer such that um, any n lines uh, when such that when the plane is divided into regions by n lines, the regions can be colored as described above in a lang. <laughs> it's too wordy already. As described above, or you can say the regions can be colored alternately or in an alternating manner. So what we want to do is to show that um, n plus one lines, uh, So I don't have, don't have to describe the whole thing. The claim is true with n plus one lines. All right. So and uh, so um, draw n lines and color. The regions uh, alternately with the two colors. This is possible by our assumption. Okay, and then the description of Joshua is. Uh, draw the n plus first line. So you already have. Uh, okay, so ito. okay then. Draw the n plus one. TH line. So I'm going to use something colored. Okay. 
Hold on. Secondary, the two colors are orange. Tapos, this is orange. This is orange. This is orange. And then this is, and then ito, this is light blue. And then light blue. Okay. And then draw the N plus first line. Ito nga pa yung epic po sa digital print, can just copy-paste. All right. Just copy-paste. Anyway, it's here. So that's easy to our advantage. I'm going to draw it in red. Okay. Okay. Retain the coloring on one side of this line on the other side invert the coloring okay so uh, Ito, uh, this is okay paren. This is okay. No blue. But no mga orange magiging. I are your the, the, the far right that you mentioned. So, oh. Hey, no, no, no. Yeah, <laughs> so easy. All right, so yeah. All right, there you go. All right. Okay. The resulting coloring. satisfies the conditions of the claim. And then in the end, sigana QED na lang. All right. All right. Okay, so that's uh, the math induction special problems that I was able to think of for today. Okay. Uh, now trigonometry is going to span multiple sessions, but, but at least let me get started with uh, angles. Okay, in trigonometry, we're gonna study angles, but not in a purely geometric sense. In uh, geometry, when you talk about angles, naturally they, or oftentimes they come as these uh, gaps that you find at the vertices of a polygon, or when you have two intersecting lines, so you have an angle here or you have an angle here. But in uh, trigonometry, when we study angles, we are oftentimes going to put them in what we refer to as standard position. So an angle in standard position. Okay, so we're going to start with a plane where you have the x-axis and the y-axis, what we're going to do is position the angle in such a way that its vertex is going to lie on the origin. One ray will be on the positive x-axis. So this would be the uh, initial ray. And then the other ray will fall on, well, wherever it ends up falling. So we're going to call that other ray the terminal ray. 
and the angle will be this. So when the angle is drawn this way, angle theta, then we say that angle theta is drawn in standard position. The initial ray is uh, always going to be drawn on the positive x-axis. The terminal ray can be drawn wherever it falls. It could be in the first, second, third, or fourth quadrants, or the terminal ray can be on any of the axes. It could be on the positive or negative x-axis, or on the positive or negative y-axis. Now, um, two rays two angles are said to be coterminal if their terminal rays coincide. Three dimensional po, diba po, is, is there such a thing as a three dimensional angle na, kasi kung ganun po, kung if only at the initial ray is on the x-axis, if there was also the be a spatial angle, how free are the two other axes? I'm not familiar with uh, if you're referring to spherical angles. I'm, I'm not that familiar with them. But at this point, you say when we analyze angles, we're thinking of an angle as a two dimensional object. So, in context, Natan for now is the plane. Because, say, if we're going to draw an angle, uh, with an initial and terminal ray in three dimensional space. Well, of course, it is possible to draw an angle there in three-dimensional space. It's just that we cannot draw it in standard position. Kasi ganito, uh, what makes up an angle? An initial ray and a terminal ray. And an initial ray and a terminal ray, they, they are coplanar. Pwede mo silang i-embed, pwede mo silang ilagay in the same plane. All right. Parang kanwari, circle. Uh, you could draw it in three-dimensional space, but a circle, you can draw it on a sheet of paper. So that's why when we start talking about circles, we start with drawing circles on a plane first. All right. Because ultimately, a circle can be drawn on a plane. It is sufficient to analyze a circle as an object on a plane. And for now, it's the same with an angle. All right, the initial ray and the terminal ray. Because for in drawing the initial ray, you just need the vertex and then one other point. Then connect them, you have the initial ray. For the terminal ray, you're going to use the same vertex point and then a third point to determine the direction of the terminal ray. But all these were based on these three points. And remember, Every three points are coplanar. You could draw them on the same plane. All right. Uh, angles are said to be coterminal if their terminal rays coincide. So, for example, um, this other angle, when we think of an angle in standard position, we could think of uh, it being initially uh, compressed and then drawn on the initial ray. And then we are opening. So Papa, it's, it's like you're opening a book. You, you're, uh, you have one of the covers on the table and then you're opening it. Uh, and how wide you open the book is modeled by where the terminal ray is. So parang, you know, he here in, in this illustration, so ganito, so ginaganan mo. Right, right, okay, precisely. And so if, uh, for example, it's possible to go around. Huh. Ayun nga po, yung mga, may mga parang absurd po ng mga angles na Five forty degrees or something. Oh, all right. So this is a coterminal with the why does it exist? Because essentially you always subtract the three sixty and one. Why, why, why do they exist? All right, uh, that's a good question. That's a good question. Because 
and, and that's why I want to go through the trigonometry carefully because um, w when people study trigonometry, I, understandably, they start with angles in a triangle. Actually, in the first place, yeah, so some people would wonder, bakit kailangan lumampas sa 180 degrees? Okay, because as far as triangles are concerned. But then the thing is, there are applications of tri trigonometry which go beyond triangles. The, uh, so there are applications of trigonometry which go beyond geometry, for which things like the sine of 540 degrees would make sense. So, nung, all right, if you think of uh, 10 degrees versus 370 degrees, so can you imagine that if you draw them in standard position, they're going to be coterminal with each other? Because in 370 degrees, this is uh, 360 degrees plus 10 degrees. So these two angles, when drawn in standard position, they're going to be coterminal with each other. But there are physics applications to say where we have to deal with the sine of 370, sine of 370 degrees or in region measure, not just in physics, but in higher mathematics, where this time you're not necessarily thinking of them as geometric objects anymore. You're just thinking of them as numbers. Oh, there's a fan. Oh. The degrees is definitely not the same as rotating another full degree, uh, rotating a full rotation at another 10 degrees. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, geometrically, you know, there, there is a difference, but even in that illustration, you're thinking of an angle as a geometric object. Oh, when we go further on, we will be taking the trigonometric functions, the sine and cosine, of numbers where we are not even gonna think of angles in a geometric setting anymore. So kumbaga uh, in uh, certain formulas, I can't think of an example right now. So basically whenever there, where, where, where there is a spring and the, the way a spring moves is it's bouncing up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. The graph can be the graph of the trajectory can be described by a trigonometric function. And note how in this illustration where you are talking about a spring, there's not really any angle being considered anymore. So the graph can be expressed as you know, the sine of t plus pi over four where t is in seconds, for example. So if you look at this thing inside, t plus pi over four, we are taking the sine of that. And when we take the sine of something, we usually think of an angle inside. So some people might be led to think that t plus pi over four is an angle. But see here, what is t? T is a quantity of time. T is in seconds. So T plus pi over four, so and even pi over four. So we can think of pi over four, you might think of it as 45 degrees, but in this const context, we're supposed to think of pi over four as approximately 3.1415 divided by four. And then whatever the value of that is, that's gonna be interpreted as seconds to be added to this value of T. So as you can see here, wala lang angle dito, in which case we don't have to think of 370 and 10 as the same because they are very much different from each other. 10 seconds versus 370 seconds later, they are different. All right. So trigonometry, it started with, well, you know, the, the etymology. Uh, trigonometry measurement and then triangles and angles in a triangle, but eventually we're gonna go beyond angles in a triangle. All right, so that's why all these other angular measurements exceeding 360 degrees, going beyond two pi, or even negative angles that's why eventually they're gonna be sensible. <laughs> 
Kumbaga, they, they're preparing you for absurd things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absurd. Yes, I, I like that word. Absurd from a current, for, I would say from your current point of view. But eventually, you know, you just get used to it. Okay. All right. Okay. So we will get there. And I'm really happy that, that you're asking. Because in fact, a lot of pre-calculus students, they just finished pre-calculus and it just did not occur to them. All right, but anyway, let, let's start with the basics. Okay. Um, so I'm not gonna talk about degree measure anymore. All right, but Ben said, um, Ito is a pang uh, usual question. Are, are you familiar with the region measurement of angles? So, uh, maybe I understand it po. One region is equal to the, let's say, po, let's say po the unit circle. So, the unit mm -hmm. circle, its mean diameter is on the x axis. Mm -hmm. So, its radius, uh, what is the radius is the angle forms when you. When you make an arc that is uh, equivalent to the circle radius, and then from yeah. the end of that arc, you draw a line to the center. Mm -hmm. the right. So, so, so that's correct. Uh, the, so one radian is the measure of the angle. So if you want to consider a unit circle centered at the origin, so that means the radius is one unit. So what we do is, starting from the point one zero here one zero so imagine you have a tape measure one end put it at one zero and then uh lay down the tape measure until along the arc of the circle we have traced uh we have traced an arc whose length is one unit that the angle that's formed by this particular segment on the initial ray then if you connect that point where we ended, so that will be a segment on the terminal ray. So this angle theta is equal to one radian. Or sometimes uh, if there is a need to distinguish one rad. But by default, angular measurements, when no unit is indicated, we have to assume, we must assume, because it's a standard that it's in radian measure. So for example, if you see sine of 60, this is not sine of 60 degrees, but rather sine of 60 radians. Why did the gradient fall out of use? I mean, like it's 100. Or ano po, mas, mas decimal po siya. Why, why did it fall out of use when the degree and radian, uh, the, actually the radian is always in the white reveal. But uh, why, 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 why was the degree preferred over the gradient? Sorry, why is? Why was the, why was the degree preferred over the radian when it had uh, 90? It had more of a, yung sexagesimal nga po na ano, uh, mm -hmm. or it favored more of the sexagesimal. Uh, number system rather than the decimal system. Why did uh, why did why was it more popular than the gradient? Why are degrees more popular? Why are degrees more in use? That is that, again that is are, that your question? Why are they more in use than the gradient? You know, 100, 100 degrees in the right angle. Sorry, are, are you talking about radians versus degrees? Gradient versus degree. Ah, grad. Oh, grad. Ah, okay, okay. Um, actually, I'm not that familiar with uh grad. And they're familiar with grad, the uh, angular measurement. Uh, for for what I use trigonometry and angles for, for me, radian measure and degree measure are sufficient. I have heard of grad. I think it occurs in engineering applications. Tamaba. But 100 degree, 100 grads per right angle. Ah, okay. Actually, I don't know. Uh, I don't know the context. And in fact, even people who are familiar with radians and degrees, if it's not explained to them, they also don't understand. Uh, bakit hindi na lang radians lahat? Bakit hindi na lang degrees lahat? 
Okay, but, but ultimately, because for me, from a pure math perspective, all the other angular measurement systems pale in comparison to radians. Radians are the gold standard. Radian measurement is what's preferred because I don't know how familiar you are with differentiation formulas. Are you a little bit familiar with differentiation formulas? Okay, so for example, what's the derivative of the sine function? Uh, oh. Cosine. Cosine. All right. Oh, wait, hold on. Uh, the derivative d theta. So the derivative of the sine function is the cosine function. Ang simple lang, di ba? The derivative of sine theta equals cosine theta. But the assumption here is that theta has to be in region measure. Because if theta is in degree measure, pwedeng gumawa ng formula, but the formula will be slightly more complicated. But the thing is, if the angular measurement is going to be in radians, the differentiation formulas and other calculation and other calculus formulas are just going to be so much simpler. Napakadali ng formulas, napaka simple if the ang if the measurement of theta will be in radians rather than degrees. So that's why, from a pure math perspective, in my perspective at least, radians to the detriment of all other angular measurements. Nung degrees, it's just because it's uh, what many school children are first introduced to in if they are introduced to angles in grade school and high school, they start with degrees. So the, there's a sentimental favoritism for degrees. Rotation 180, they don't have rotation. Oh, 180, 90. So, 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 well, nasanay tayo. What if in a different universe, what if a right angle, instead of measuring it as 90 degrees, they measured it as 80 degrees? And then masasanay lang tayo sa 80, 160, 240, uh, 320. So, as opposed to 90, 180, 270, 360. All right. So nasanay lang kasi tayo, you know, because of the hexadecimal system then. But we just happen to have uh, gotten used to that. Okay, so that's a uh, region measure. So much so, and so in general, if you have a, a larger circle with radius R units, so starting from the point R zero, if you take your tape measure and a map and then end where you have spanned one unit. R units one. No, actually one unit, one unit. I, I mean one one unit paren. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Sorry, R, R, R. Right, right, right. R. Okay. <laughs> R, R. Uh, because uh, the whole thing scales eh, by a factor of R. You're right. Okay. So this angle here, theta, will still be one radian. So th this is the uh, standard. Uh, th this is precisely the basis for the formula where um, if you have, in general, in standard position, uh, an angle, whose measurement is theta radians, okay? Theta. And then the length here is S. Sorry, I meant to use green, just for the sake of consistency. Okay. Arc length S. And then the radius is R. Then the formula is that S is equal to R times theta. Are you familiar with this? But then prefers to use green over green. Uh, uh, S is equal to R theta. Ah, uh, ito po yung ano, R, yes, uh, the degrees po, mas, mas, mas complicated yata po yung ano eh. Oh, 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 oh. Yes. right, right, right. So, so based, 
ito para ano lang. Um, so the thing is, um, so so if you compare it to the second figure, the one in the middle, so it's still the same radius r. So what one observes here is that the opening of the angle theta is proportional to the arc length. So wait, I, I, I wrote R here, so I meant to write down here one. All right. So nangyari kasi from these uh, two figures. Okay. Okay. S yes. and theta are proportional. Here for your arc length for it was still one. Oh, sorry, sorry. R, 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 right. Oh, gosh, darn. Okay, R. I thought I corrected it earlier or when I erased I. Okay, I wanted to use green and then I'm going to write R. All right, S and theta are proportional. So the proportionality constant is the radius. All right. So, can say uh, here um, in the so S and theta. So, in the middle figure, the arc length is R. Tapos the radian measure is one. So, in general, if the arc length is S, and then the angular the measure of the angle is theta. So, from here. That's where you get the formula S is equal to R times theta. Okay. And then the area of the sector. So the area of the sector, all right, A and theta are also. proportional all right so we talk compare natin with a full circle with a full circle so the oh hold on hold on um so let, let's justify area of the sector. Okay. Okay. If um, S is equal to For one complete revolution, okay, S is equal to the circumference, which is uh, two pi. Okay, so for a unit circle, wait, sorry. 2 pi r pala. Let's just make it in general. 2 pi r. So the circumference is 2 r. Then mangyayari, s is equal to r theta. And then if you put 2 pi r equals r theta. And then if you solve for theta, theta is equal to 2 pi. So this is why one complete revolution which we associate with 360 degrees, that's why in regions, that's why it's two pi. All right, one half revolution, 180 degrees, of course, is pi. So my figures, let's say, post it in that log, po kaya screen is po. Let's say, po yung something, anything, let's say, parang babu siyang McDonald's na logo. Tapos ang screen is it's uh, yung mga ano, it's it's easy to find out the circumference pa rin. Pag, 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 yeah, yeah, if you stretch it out. 
Okay. Why, why, why is it so hard to find the circumference on the tips when you, you just have to stretch on the circle? Kung two pi r naman po pa po yung ano, yung circumference of a circle, why can't they find the per perfect na perfect equation for the circumference of an ellipse? For the, well, for, for, for an ellipse, it's pi times a, b. Ah, area po yan. Ano yan? Ah, sorry, sorry. Okay, uh, area, you're right, you're right, you're right. From pi r squared. For an ellipse, may formula, may formula which one can determine by calculus. I, I just don't remember it exactly for, for the circumference of an ellipse. So question mo is, bakit for a circle, why is it simple? And for a for, for an ellipse, why is it complicated? Parang ganun ba? Oh. All right. Uh, siguro kasi ito, um, let, let's continue the discussion next time. Pero what I would like to talk about is, kasi ganito, I, I'd like to uh, discuss all these things from ground up. So for example, um, in this particular section of my discussion, I use here the claim that the circumference is 2 pi r. Uh, what I'd like to address is why is the circumference 2 pi r? Because uh, oftentimes we just go along taking it for granted. Why is the circumference of a circle with radius r equal to 2 pi r? So the, the observation is based on the following. All circles are similar. So you have a circle with radius R1 and then a larger circle with radius R2. The circumference of the diameter is just pi. But if it were not, then it would be something else. Sorry, what's that? Well, if in case for the circumference of over diameter in another universe was not pi, then it would not be pi four. It would not be three point one four one five nine. It, it it could be different, but but what what we are backing on here is that because of the similarity, the ratio of the circumference so you over know, the you diameter. Know. Kumbaga, it's constant. Is it just your luck na the circumference over diameter is the same? Is, uh, hindi pala po. If, if the, the, the circumference over diameter is exactly 3.1415926, 54. Your question is, why is pi 3.1415 blah blah blah? Bakit ganon? Kasi in a different universe, what, what, what if it's something else? Is that your question? Is that your question? Sorry, I didn't hear you. Okay, okay, okay. But but, but first off, I think you're familiar with this, Dipa, right? that uh, because of the fact that all circles are similar, then the ratio of the circumference over the diameter, no matter how large the circle is, it's always gonna be constant. So what uh, mathematics did is uh, call this pi. Okay, and that's how we are able to arrive at the form of the circumference is equal to pi times the diameter, and the diameter is twice the radius. So that's why the circumference is 2 pi r. So I guess your next question now is um, in green why is pi the constant? approximately equal to 3.14. So so you, you so in fact from what we have uh, written here on this box we can define pi as the circumference over the diameter of any circle. All right? So I suppose your question is 
but but why is the ratio of the circumference over the diameter? Why is it approximately 3.14 blah blah blah? Bakit hindi 5.5? Bakit hindi 7.6? I don't have a straightforward answer that I can give to you right now, but uh, from how I'm able to see things right now, all right, mangyayari kasi is um, from calculus, one can come up with identities like Pi over four is equal to, let me just get something uh, from, okay, series four pi. Oh, you know, series four pi. All right, so, one, one, seven, minus one, all right, alternating, one minus one third plus one over five minus one over seven plus dot, dot, dot. So, so the thing with many of the constants in mathematics, so if you're familiar with E, so we, we know from experience, and in fact, high school textbooks would give an approximation for E as 2.718, blah, blah, blah. And then pi would be initially estimated as 3.1415, blah, blah, blah. But, but of course, these constants, they come from a particular place. There, there's a particular reason why they, they are introduced. And mathematicians are not just going to come up with, oh, you know what? I woke up this morning. I want to define this constant, which is approximately 3.1415, blah, blah, blah. All right. There has got to be a reason. And so what the, the way I see it is that definitions were given. So, for example, pi is this particular number defined as C over D. And then E is the number such that when you look at the natural logarithmic function, when X is equal to E, Y is equal to one. So, so kumbaga, they wanted to solve the equation ln X equals one. So there is a solution. The solution, let's give it a label. Let's call it E. So th there's a reason why such a solution or why such a definition is useful. But, but then it, it, the, 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 the next question is that approximately what are these two numbers equal to? So using this formula I presented it, involving pi, it's possible to approximate pi as this, 3.1415, blah, blah, blah. But of course, this particular formula came a bit later. I remember the other day, I saw YouTube videos where uh, mathematicians in antiquity in uh, they have defined pi as a circumference over the over the diameter. But uh they have no computers, it took them much longer. So, after so many years, they had pi approximately to six decimal places to ten decimal places. All right, so the approximations came a little bit later, na lang. So, but, but it turns out that uh, using the properties that have developed for, that were developed from mathematics using trigonometry and then onwards to the definition of sines and cosines of numbers and then power series, well, you have this formula involving pi and you can use that to approximate pi. On the other hand, E naman is one plus one plus one over so actually one over zero factorial plus one over one factorial, one over two factorial plus one over three factorial. So my power series then. And this is what leads us to the 2.718 approximation for you. All right. So I, I like those questions. Uh, so how is pi defined? The ratio of the circumference over the diameter because all circles are similar, it's not gonna matter which circle you use. Circumference over diameter will end up as the same thing in our universe. It just happens to be 3.1415 and so on. In a different universe, then perhaps the laws of calculus are gonna be different, although I cannot see why, because um, in our universe, one plus one equals two. In a different universe, 
if they say one plus one is equal to three, then perhaps that's because they count one, three, two, four. So they might just end up with a different symbol, but the meaning we give to the number two, if they happen to use this particular symbol, then the, the meaning they should give to three should be the same meaning we give to the numeral two. So in a different universe, I'm not sure how the rules are gonna be different. In that sense, I think some of these rules are gonna be the same because these constants are abstract. They are conceptual. In a different universe, the gravitational constant might be different, but that's because the gravitational constant is a physical constant but pi is an abstract concept. Okay. All right. Okay, I think Joshua, that's uh, it for today. We have uh, more than enough time to talk about other things related to trigonometry. All right. Sir, better for open up na sa inyo. So, nangyari po yung... Kasi may, may mga kilala kami na yung mga anak nila po, meron silang sponsor, di ba po? So, mm -hmm. iba, iba po, meron po nyari yung ibang may kila, kaibigan si Joshua na he's studying now in Eurokiss 13. Uh, may sponsor siya, pero hindi siya, hindi siya academic yun, ano yun, yun, ano niya, yung gift niya po eh, uh, sa music. But he's studying at Mozart University. Okay. Pero, uh, Ang, ang, kasi ang inaano po ng mga sponsor ni so kanyari, if you if you check the foundations po ng mga kanyari, ni MVP or something yung PLBT or Meralco ang inaano nila yung mga gusto lang i sponsor yung mga college students kaya uh, I I saw my cousin po na first cousin nitong uh, Christmas break now, he's a president of PLDT. I was talking about him, about Joshua. So, because can you help us submit our letter of request? Na kung pwede bang si MVP mapansin niya si Joshua. So, because kasi yun sa college, sabi ko, baka hindi niya na kailangan ng scholarship or something. Kasi baka makakuha siya ng scholarship on his own. Ang, mm -hmm. ang kailangan, ang sabi ko lang sa Vincent ko, ang kailangan natin, yung maitawid si Joshua kasi uh, we're bleeding, sabi ko, no? At inisip ko naman, kung yung mga kakilala namin iba, parang deserving din si Joshua kung yun, given yung abilities ng mga kakilala namin na na-sponsor. Pero sa sabi ko kasi, just imagine, sabi niya, yung mga ano dyan, nag ano, ganitin na nila rules. Kaya sabi ko, ang, ang problema nga sa Philippines, kaya nga gusto rin natin magpansin, sabi ko kasi, para rin, yun, every time na nag nag, nag, nag uh, nag-guess si Joshua sa TV, ine-edit lang po eh. Pero ang, ang pinaka-goal namin, sabi namin, gusto sana namin, meron social relevance. Dapat, magkaroon talaga ng bill for the gifted na parang to support yung mga uh, Filipino gifted kids na hindi, hindi parang kami po kasi parang from bata si Joshua, kami lang lagi na ano po, no, nagsishoulder lahat ng mga, mga books na every Everything, mga everything. So sabi ko, uh, hindi kasi defined ng ating depth game na meron may, may mga ano, na, kailangan na support alam al sa mga developed countries, di ba po? Parang yun, may kaibigan din kami na Filipino pero American citizens na ngayon. Uh, I just saw then before the first week of December, parang nag-apply sila na sa US na meron may program din yung isang professor na ano eh, the, one of the professors in the University of Florida nominated this kid na kasing age ni Joshua na to be included dun, para tuturuan yata ng free um, 48 students sila na worldwide we didn't know it kasi nasa Philippines kami di ba po? Oh, nasa oh, pero sabi ko sayang, so, sayang po eh I, 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 I sent a friend request sa nakita ko uh, kaibigan namin na tatay kasi parang siyempre pinag-usap po he was proud of his son sabi ko uh, can we apply ay sorry sabi niya na 
for this, you can apply next year, sabi sa amin. So sabi ko, parang yung mga opportunities na ganun, wala sa Philippines kasi uh, hindi napapasa lagi po yung bill for the gift. Yung po kasing uh, psychologist si Joshua is the one pushing for the bill for the gifted for uh, decades na po. Pero mm. hindi po tinatapos ang ating Senado. <laughs> kasi Mga ewan, madaming pinagtutuon ng pansin. Maraming pinagtutuon na mas pagkakakitaan nila kaysa yun. Alright. So, so sabi ko, ano, ano kaya pong magandang argument na bakit po iyan ni si Joshua na hindi na hindi pa naman siya yung college na kagaya doon sa mga ano nila po, parang certain uh, uh, ano man tawag doon po, yung criteria for qualifications for the support of let's say MVP or some of the like po. Ano kaya pong oh, argument? Ang hirap po niyan kasi even sa International Math Olympiad. Sir, ganito. Um, ultimately, kahit gaano pa kaganda nung argument, ang personal experience ko, and I'm a bit uh, parang hardened by experiences um Ultimately, kailangan meron kayong contact. In your case, meron po kayong kausap na, di ba? Po yung first cousin ko po. Ano okay. Po alright, alright, alright. So, 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 so that's good, that's good. Kasi if wala yun, kung kangari susulat lang kayo to MVP and he doesn't know who you are, unfortunately, uh, people like MVP and foundations that they manage, they receive many, many different letters, all with... Uh, spectacular arguments on the validity or, or the nobility of, of their cause. And unfortunately, they're just going to have to choose. But if they have someone who could speak on their behalf, so at least in this case, you're your cousin. All right. So, okay. I, I suppose we can hope. No argument for it and no reason why people or students like Joshua should be supported is because well i'm not ready for an answer right now so parang top of my head lang investment investment for the future sometimes when we wait for kung gusto natin lagyan ng nationalistic angle ng nationalistic bent the the, the thing is ako personally if uh, a student decides to study abroad and then in the long run, decide to stay there, okay lang. It's a personal choice. I almost almost stayed in the U.S., but at some point I decided to go back to the Philippines. Pero for uh, proposing, uh, for making a proposal, an argument, I would suggest nung, an, a nationalistic band, we want to keep them in the Philippines. We want, therefore, we want to support them in the Philippines. So, itong mga gifted uh, students or, or those who are um, perhaps in, in a similar boat. So, we want to support them in the Philippines with the hopes of having them stay in the Philippines. Yun po nga, actually po yun, yun, ano na, kasi ko na po yun, yun, mami niya, neighbor namin. So, nung, nung Christmas, birthday ng mami niya. So prior to Christmas, I already called him up. Sabi ko, okay, uh, meron pala akong i-open up sa'yo, sabi ko sa first cousin ko. Tapos nakita ko parang hindi siya receptive. Sabi niya, well, there are thousands. So ganun, ganun, ganun po yung tono niya. Oh, no. ako, yes, sabi ko, kaya lang, sabi ko, uh, sabi ko, o oh, sige, hindi na ako, tumahimik lang po ako. So nakita kami na sa birthday ng mami niya, sabi niya, uh, Kuya Jay, sabi niya, ano, um, I'll give you a call one of these days, sabi niya. Tapos uh, nag-usap nga kami. Sabi, uh, iba, medyo iba na yung stance niya. Sabi, sabi ko kasi, sabi ko lang sa kanya, if you're not willing to, well, like, uh, speak in on behalf of Joshua, it will not prosper. I will not write that email letter to you anymore. Sabi ko kasi, ganun hindi po yung experience namin. Hindi, hindi, hindi rin siya makapasik kasi ang dami naman nag, uh, ano, yung pong meron mm. inspector, parang yun po mapapansin, di ba po? Oh. Sabi ko, <laughs> if you will not speak on his behalf, I, I will not send that email anymore. So because if I think about it, then I'm just saying, "Wala." Saying the effort. Para pinapinasulat mo lang kami para tumahimik kami. 
Very safe and frankly to him. Tapos sabi niya, kasi ganito yan, sabi niya, yun, PLDT, okay, amiral ko. Yung mga amiral ko, gusto niya, meron silang mga, and uh, they will support yung mga, magiging baka potential na mag-serve sa company, mga electrical mm-hmm. engineer. And sabi, sabi ko, just imagine, ito si Joshua, sabi ko, ang gusto niya, alternative, ang, to be a scientist to, who knows, baka hindi naman, hindi niya ma-discover kasi kung hindi naman nakaguhit sa palad niya. Pero, ang, 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 goal, ang gusto niya talaga is to find an alternative, an alternative source of energy. I think MVP will be in the, interested in that. So in the, something in the future. I don't know. So because, no? why, why do we have to support them? Because just to... Ito, sabi ko, hindi, okay, on a nationalistic level, yung pong sinasabi niyo nga. Pero sabi ko, ito, kung if something like that, baka naman si Joshua, we can hone him and then he collabs with somebody else, some other people na like him, and they're able to discover something which is beneficial not only to Filipinos, but also to different kinds of, all huma, humankind, di ba po? So sabi ko, ah, why do we... Why, 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 what we're trying to do is what we're trying to make him synchronous. Parang yun si, ang sinasabi kasi sa akin ng uh, ano niya, yung psychologist po. She was also a psychologist one time of uh, I don't know kung kilala niya po yung, yung child prodigy na si Michaela Fudeli. Mm-hmm. But by name, by name. So si Michaela graduated from UP at uh, less than 16 years old yata po. So, uh, okay. sa ginapang nila, underground. Yung, they broke the, the, the bylaws of na dapat maka, pwede makapasok na ganito. Kaya sabi niya sabi ng mami ni Michaela Fudeli na uh, sila Corina Sanchez at saka sila Jessica So, they wanted to interview them. Pero they declined kasi hindi hindi actually legal yun yung ginagawa na kasi si yun si Dr. Raho yung psychologist si Joshua at saka ni Michael Fudeli was a vice chancellor of UP so nagawa ng paraan sabi ko pero oh. ano, sabi ko ang ang magan ang best scenario is in the future legal <laughs> oh <laughs> then uh, legal na oh so I can make me mechanism to handle cases like that hindi no ano like like uh, Dati, inaantay namin yun. What, what I was thinking, every time na may, I was uh, asking Dr. Ho, parang pabad news na pabad news. Hindi yata matutupad yan. Baka, I don't, we don't know, baka hindi, it, it might not happen na uh, during the formative years of Joshua. Sabi ko, we'll just do it our way. Sabi ko, kahit na oh. umasos na tayo kasi kung aantayin pa natin yung government, mar- maraming pri- <laughs> ibang priorities po yung mm-hmm. government natin. So sabi ko ganun po yung ano ko lang sa kanya sabi ko if if is it will it be possible po na humingi kami po ng kunyari yung contact details siya para kung if they want to call you po. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I can be contacted and I could talk about um yes, 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 yes. Kasi kunya sa because that's, that's perfectly all right. That's perfectly all right. Ang argument ko niyan I I I was I am thinking hindi ko naman siya madiretso ng kahit na first cousin ko siya. Kasi yung mga anak niya, matatalino rin po. Kanyari, top ng class and everything. Mm-hmm. Pero sabi ko, ako, I've been... Uh, when I took a medicine, sabi ko, uh, well, uh, half of our class was either uh, a valedictorian or salutatorian mm-hmm. in, in high school. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, Laude or uh, Magna or Asuma in, in college. Sabi ko, kaya lang, sabi ko, hindi naman sila ganun ka-advance, sabi ko. So they, they oh, could... Uh, my, my 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 direct aunt the, the sister of my my uncle is married to uh, the brother uh, brother of Miriam so i i i know people that can be are smart pero they can still fit in the mold ng ano po di ba po kanya sila yung mga defensors lahat sila UP so okay pa sa kanila kaya nga before siguro i i i I talked to my direct auntie na kung pwede bang i-bloom kay Senator Miriam when she was still active and well. Kaya lang, iniisip oh, so alive. ang iniisip ni Miriam, kung ako nga, I did not have that privilege, okay lang sa akin na dumaan ako sa UP. Kaya lang, iniisip ko, kunyari, uncle ko, okay, siya, mag- magaling na siya, siya na yung top ng class nila, yung kapatid ni Miriam, si Miriam, pero kaya lang, 
I knew them in per- personally. Hindi naman sila, ano, baka, pwede, they have the capacity to be mag na kung lode or something, but hindi po sila ganun ka-advance, hindi ba po? Right, right. I, I think that the, the argument, sir, is you know, nah, just because uh, how it was done during their time uh, sufficed, it, it doesn't mean that we cannot do better. So I, I think you're coming from the point of view na, na in nga, no, from Miriam Defense Source and Chago. Maybe these opportunities were not available during their time and our children in such a situation would still be able to manage, but, if, if, but perhaps there's a better way. Uh, m- moving forward. I think that's what you're trying to argue. Yes po. Kung kunyari po, kunyari, doon tuwa nga kami sa estudyata nyo kung okay si Joshua. Well, I I I suppose mas okay po. Kasi, kasi dito po sa Tarlac, yung mayor po, uh, kilala namin personally, they, she offered Joshua na, okay, sige, kahit na bata ka pa, if you're, she called the the president of the Tarlac State University, uh, okay, pwede ka pumasok doon kung gusto mo. Kaya I was thinking, hmm. Kung sa ano, uh, I, I asked some of the professors, hindi po nila nasagot ng adequately mga ano, mga tanong. Hmm. So I went Chika, just because just, just because mag-aattend ng college classes does not mean it's gonna be mentally stimulating for Joshua. Uh, God knows, when you attend a college class, baka pag-multiply ng polynomial ng mga students na hihirapan, then Joshua is gonna find himself in such a situation and it's not gonna benefit him. Kaya nga po, nun, 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 kunyari, yung mga teachers na ngayon, talagang nice-stimulate si Joshua. Tal- sinasabi niya nga, uy, parang gumalik nun isang araw. I don't know if it's just uh, joking or something or it's his way of saying. Parang parang gumaling ako so because you know, si Lofi yun yung problem. So, parang ano na, Ibang level ako ngayon, parang gumaling ako kasi na, 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 nahanap ko yung solution. Well, in fact, yes, I think, sabi ko sa kanya. Sabi ko, kasi ang ganda nga ng ano, mga tinuturo sa'yo. Sabi ko, kasi kung if we just avail, parang po yung may nagtuturo sa kanya isa ngayon kasi uh, may, may utang sa amin, parang nagtuturo sa Tarlac State University. Pero nakikita namin yung difference, kanyari po yung turo ninyo sa kanyang turo ko. <laughs> sabi ko, Hindi, hindi porke, uh, kasi sabi niyo nga porke, nagtuturo sa senior university, okay na po, di ba po? Pero talaga, no, no, mas, no. Di mas magaling na, 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 na talaga na tao. Parang, parang sinasabi ko nung, sa kanya, sa pinsan ko, hindi porke nag-graduate ng medisina, lahat ng doktor ba, pare-pareho ba yung kapasidad, hindi naman po, di ba po? Yeah. Yeah. Kung, kung pwede ko pong ma, ano, kung okay lang po yun ma, ano po, ma, 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 ano namin kayo pinyari as, ref, as reference for Joshua. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, Sir J, may, may meeting ako ng 4.30pm. Okay, uh, I need to prepare for 4.30pm, but you, you can give my contact information. Okay, but thank you po. All right. Bye, Joshua. Bye, bye, I hope nag-enjoy ka. Opo. Thank you po. Bye. Bye-bye, Paul.